Hello, my viewers. Welcome back to another episode of Before Game Day. The bye week was last week, and you know before the bye week, we discussed a lot of things from the Dirty Bird Falcons, from the Mad Cowboy Disease, from Elon Musk cursing us in that game against the Cowboys and made us lose, from all type of things, Mr. Psychedelics, Aaron Rodgers, um, Jets, and from the greatest heist in the world. Daniel Jones stealing that money from the Giants like that. We, we discussed a lot of things before the bye week, but now the bye week is um, over. And now in a new state, a new slate of a season, really, right here. And this season right here is going to be, like the Avengers said, the end game. It's going to be the end game for us because you got a lot of big-time matchups. You're playing a lot of playoff teams, except the Browns. The Browns are not a playoff team. They would not make the playoffs. They'll probably finish with a top um, seed or something like that. They're going to probably lose the rest of their games mostly and be bottom feeders where they belong. But um, besides the Browns, you have the Ravens, you have the Chiefs, the Eagles, Commanders we play this week. And you got all the different individuals, different teams, Bengals as well, different teams going to be in the playoffs, or teams that might even be contending for Super Bowl, like the Chiefs and the Ravens. So we got to gear up and get ready for a big showdown. But the first opponent we have, like I mentioned, is the Commanders. And I'm going to discuss to you why we can find a way to defeat the Commanders by breaking down their team. Jaden Daniels, amazing player, playing phenomenal, 71 completion percentage as a rookie. I'm around to you guys on my channel. I said he's going to be very good. Is he might be the best quarterback. He might, be, he might be the best quarterback after draft class. You can go back and watch that video. I told you guys. I told you. Jaden Daniels played the most games in college and playing more as usually the quarterback usually helps you transition easier as we've seen from a lot of people who play more in college who said stay longer and transition over pretty easily because they learn more of a pro offense. He's done a good job. Brian Robinson, good player as well. Um, Terry McLaurin, Scary Terry, good as well. A phenomenal player. No matter what quarterback is throwing the ball to him, he always shows out and performs. Kind of reminds me of Deirdre Hopkins a little bit. No matter what he, who he had, he had TJ Yates, he had Tom Savage, he had all type of guys and still went out there and performed. And Terry McLaurin is doing the same exact thing. And you look at, of course, Zach Ertz. Remember, the people, think, people say he was washed up. He was, a, you know, throw away. They traded him away to the Cardinals. The Eagles did. And he got put, pushed off away to Commanders. And he's playing better now, too, as well. You look at all different guys they got. Austin Eckler. You look at their defense. Coach Quinn doing a good job. He's probably happy that he left the Cowboys. And now on a team like the Commanders, coaching them to victory. They're doing a phenomenal job. So we got a tough task ahead of us. But we added some people, too. We got some guys on our team as well. Russell Wilson. Um, 2 and 0 as a starter already. TJ Wide is playing phenomenal. Six and a half sacks, four forced fumbles as well. Triple team, getting double team, and still making plays. Alex Hodgson on the other side, making big time plays as well. Had two sacks last game. Cam Hayward, Kellen Bennon. You know, then you look at Herbig. He will be back this week, most likely. And then you look at, of course, the guy we added in Preston Smith. He's going to be a big time piece. 68 and a half sacks over his career so far, his 10 years in the league. And he's going to be a, another added weapon. We used to say the Steelers had a three headed monster. He had TJ Watt, Cam Hayward, and he had Alex High Smith. Do we say it was a four headed monster now? Because you add, of course, Herbig in it. Now it's a five-headed monster. You add in Preston Smith, we got a lot of guys who can attack you different areas. Count Ben, if you throw him in the mix as well, six-headed monster. We got everybody. We got everybody coming in and playing good football, and we're doing a good job, too. So I like the way our offense has been playing, our defense has been playing, of course, and everybody kind of implemented, too. And the offense did add somebody, and Mike Williams to the receiving core, who's going to help out a lot, a big target on the other side of George Pickens. He finally got his tag team partner, so we'll see what happens. But the team looking nice, six and two. Got a tough stretch of games coming up, of course. A lot of playoff contender teams, except the Browns. The Browns, not making playoffs, of course. But besides them, you got the Ravens, you got the Chiefs, the Eagles. You got the Commanders coming up, the Bengals. A lot of teams going to be in the playoffs. And some teams competing for a Super Bowl. So the Steelers, it's just an opportunity and chance to go out there to test your skills. But what's, one thing that's funny, though, to watch the Commanders is called to watch the Commanders, but they don't play in Washington. They play in Maryland. They play in Maryland. So wherever y'all at, the Steelers Nation is still going to fill their whole arena up. They play in Maryland. They're trying to play... They, they had some type of like um, bidding going on a little bit, trying to see if they're going to be in Maryland still next year or they're going to be in Virginia or Washington. I got an easy suggestion. Go wherever your team says. You call to watch the Commanders, play in Washington. That's all you got to do. Play in Washington. Just play in Washington. But since they're in Maryland, it kind of fits this next segment perfectly. You know, Maryland is known for their rappers, especially their battle rappers. We can tell you those different guys they have from Maryland. So how about I destroy the Commanders in a battle rap? Is it my goal? Is it my goal? Okay, okay. This Sunday, we're going to bring a lot of hurting. Because this Sunday, we're going to do what Coach Tomlin said a few years back. We're going to be effing working. Because we're going to walk the commanders down. We're going to come to their home, take over their place, and take over their town. We're not called the Pennsylvania Nation. We're not called the Pittsburgh Nation. We're called the Steelers Nation because our fans travel well. Whether we played in Russia, Tokyo, heaven to hell, our fans will be there. 
Well, actually, if he played in hell, I wouldn't go to hell to watch this play. But that's not the point. That's not the point. This Sunday, you can call us a fast food restaurant, maybe in and out. How are we going to be in y'all end zone a lot? And how are we going to keep you guys out? And I hope y'all fix y'all plumbing. And I hope your showers are working. But if it's not, I actually have a perfect idea. We can wash and clean ourselves off with the Washington Commander fans' tears. Because this Sunday, we're coming to take food off y'all plate. Y'all going to lose worse and get beat down worse than a Republican running for Senate in a Democratic state. And with that being said, there's only one way to end this segment with a phrase that all of Steeler Nation know. And that is, here we go, Steelers. Here we go. My score prediction for this game, I think the Steelers go out there and um, handle some business, of course. I have made a video earlier on Syndicate, Steelers Syndicate channel where I said that my score prediction would be 23 to 20. But now I'm feeling a little bit, a little bit more confident. I think the Steelers probably win, I'm going to say 28 to 20. Steelers win 28 to 20, where it's not nothing crazy, but it's a comfortable win, one score, you know, beating them um, by eight points right there, you know. A one score game, Steelers handle business and get it done. Most likely to come down to our defense getting a big stop, making a big play like always. And we walk out 7 and 2 and look to play our good old rivals, the Ravens, the following week. So that's my score prediction for the game. And that is the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you would like to subscribe for more content. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel, which will probably be tomorrow. Well, actually, when you watch this video, it'll be tomorrow. But when you, um, me making this video, I actually see you guys probably a few times. But peace out.